Hosts, items, and triggers are the basic building blocks for data collection and problem detection in Zabbix. Let's see how we can configure our first host and create a couple of items and triggers for it. We will begin by creating a host. Hosts represent our monitoring endpoints, anything from servers, network hardware, IoT devices, websites, applications, and any other type of endpoint. Host needs to have a unique host name. Host also must belong to at least a single host group. Host groups are used for grouping and filtering and are essential for configuring Zabbix user access permissions. A host can belong to an unlimited number of host groups. For our first example, we will use the Cisco SNMP template to monitor our Cisco switch. The template contains a pre-configured set of items and triggers, and any changes made on the template will be applied on the hosts utilizing this template. For SNMP checks to work, we also need to define an SNMP interface. An interface represents the endpoint address, which the values will be pulled at by Zabbix. Zabbix has four types of interfaces, Zabbix Agent, SNMP, IPMI, and JMX for the corresponding item types. Not all items use interfaces, but for these four item types, interfaces are mandatory. Let's create an SNMP interface, provide an address and port, select the SNMP version, and provide an SNMP community. There are various other settings that we can define for the host, such as host level macros, tags, value maps, inventory, encryption, and IPMI settings. I will add a tag for my host, which will provide additional information about the host environment and skip the other settings. Now let's add the host and navigate to monitoring latest data, where we will be able to see the items and their values collected on this host. Now let's create another host. This time I will be creating a Linux host with an agent interface without any templates assigned to it. Zabbix agent is already deployed on this host and we will create items and triggers for it manually. Let's provide the agent interface information, tag the host and add it. Now let's open host items and create our first item. We will begin by creating a simple ping item to check our host availability. Let's give our item a name and select its type, simple check. Pings, port checks and other simple check items are executed directly by Zabbix server and do not require an agent. Zabbix provides a variety of item types utilizing different data collection approaches, but for now we will focus on simple check and agent items. Let's select the ICMP ping key. For most items, item keys are used to define what type of metric needs to be collected on a host. For this key, all of the parameters are optional, so we can remove them. Items also require selecting the correct type of information. Zabbix will attempt to automatically select the correct type of information, and in this case, it's numeric unsigned, since the collected value will be equal either to zero or one. The item will ping the selected host interface address. Let's set the update interval to one minute. This defines how often the ping value is collected. History and trend storage periods define for how long do we wish to store the collected values and trends, value hourly aggregates. Let's also tag this item with component availability, so we can use this tag to easier filter for the item value.
Let's add the item and proceed with adding our second item, CPU utilization. CPU utilization on our Linux host can be retrieved by Zabbix agent. Let's select the Zabbix agent item type and select the system CPU util key. This key also has various optional parameters. We can click on the question mark next to the item key to read more about their possible values in the Zabbix documentation. Let's add the key without any parameters. This way the item will use the parameter default to collect our values. We will use the numeric float type of information since the item will collect CPU utilization in percent with fractional parts. Next we will select our agent interface. This will represent the address of the Zabbix agent, which will be polled by Zabbix server to retrieve the item values. Let's set the update interval to 30 seconds, tag the item with component CPU, and create the item. Now if we navigate to latest data, we can see that both of our items are successfully returning values. Go back to data collection hosts and click on triggers next to our Linux server host. Click create trigger in the top right corner of the page to create a trigger. Let's create a trigger which reacts to our host being unreachable via ping. Give the trigger a short name and now let's specify how the problem will be presented by configuring the event name field. I will use the built-in host.host .host macro in my event name. Using a built-in macro like this can be extremely useful when creating triggers on templates. Instead of specifying a static event name, the macro will be automatically resolved as the host name of the host on which the problem is detected. Currently we're creating a trigger directly on a host. So we could be using a static name here, but I prefer to follow the best practice, since in real life you will mostly be creating items and triggers on templates, and then applying the templates on hosts. Let's set the severity to high, and press add to create our first trigger expression. First, select the ping item, then select the function which you wish to use for analyzing the collected values. Zabbix provides a vast selection of functions, for different kinds of use cases. For our first example, we will use the last function, reacting if the last collected value is equal to zero. Let's insert the expression and add the trigger. Now let's add our second trigger. We will generate a problem if our CPU utilization is over 90%. Populate the trigger and event name fields and set the severity. Click add to add the new expression. Let's select the CPU utilization item and this time use the average function. We will detect an issue if the average CPU utilization value over the last 5 minutes is over 90%. Using the average function makes the trigger a lot less sensitive compared to using the last function. Using functions fit for your use case is vital for reducing trigger flapping and preventing alert floods. Let's finish the exercise by adding the trigger. In total, we have created two hosts, one for Cisco device monitoring via SNMP using the official Zabbix template, and one for our Linux server with two items and triggers for ping and CPU monitoring created directly on the host. But this is just the beginning. Feel free to explore our documentation, videos, and blog articles to find more information about various types of items, trigger function use cases, and much more.